country, Scotland. What like is it? It's a peat bog, it's a dark forest. It's a cauldron of lie, a salt pan or a coal mine. If you're guy lucky, it's a bricht beer meadow or a park of kai. Or maybe it's a field of stains. It's a tenement or a merchant's hall. It's a hoorhoos or a humble cot. Princess Street or Paddy's Market. It's a fist for a fish or a pickle of oatmeal. It's a queen's banquet or roast meat and junkets. It depends. It depends. I don't ken what like your Scotland is. Here's mine's. National flower, the thistle. National pastime, nostalgia. National weather, smur, har, drizzle, snow. National bird, the crow, the corby, le corbeau, moi. Hello, on tonight's Travels in Written Britain, I'm in Scotland, a small but powerfully literate nation. Edinburgh, its majestic capital, is the world's first UNESCO city of literature and the site of an internationally renowned annual arts festival. Scotland has inspired and produced a torrent of writing and a deeply romantic yet contrary mythology of itself. This is a nation that can only be defined through its contradictions and divisions. Take perhaps the most famous Scottish poem of all, A Man's a Man for All That, by Robbie Burns, the 18th century so-called peasant poet. The poem is a contender to be the national anthem for a potentially independent Scotland. Is there for honest poverty that hangs his heed and all that? The coward slave we pass him by, we dare be poor for all that. For all that and all that, our toil is obscure and all that. The rank is but the guinea stamp, the man's the goud for all that. Robert Burns' poem of universal equality is rightly perceived to be emblematically Scottish, and yet it's a paradox. Like John Lennon's Imagine, it's an idealistic dream at odds with reality. The world Burns was born into was deeply class-ridden. Moreover, women were and are completely excluded from his utopia. For all that and all that, their tinsel show and all that, the honest man, though ersy poor, is king of men for all that. You see yon Berkey, called a lord, who has struts and stairs and all that. Though hundreds worship at his word, he's but a coof for all that. Scotland is and always has been a country profoundly divided in character. First in its tempestuous marriage to England under the Union, second in its sectarianism, described by Scotland's former First Minister Jack McConnell as Scotland's secret shame, and third in its vigorous, still existing, class system. For all that and all that, his ribbon star and all that, the man of independent mind. He looks and laughs at all that. A prince can mark a belted knight, a marquis, duke, and all that. But an honest man's aboon his might, good faith, he mona for that. So on this journey in written Britain, I'll be exploring the dualism at the heart of Scottish identity, expressed in innumerable letters, pamphlets, poems, songs, plays and novels. It'll be a journey through a sequence of paradoxes. I'll be using Edinburgh as a base, but I'll also be visiting some historical sites within striking distance of the city, the Trossachs, for instance, and North Berwick. And I'll be following in the footsteps of the first tourists in Scotland, among them that great 18th century man of letters, Samuel Johnson. This is a terrain as rich in writing as it is in blood and history after centuries of religious and political turmoil. Then let us pray that come it may, as come it will, for all that, that sense and worth o'er all the earth shall bear the gree and all that. For all that and all that, it's coming yet for all that, that man to man, the world o'er, shall brothers be for all that. Great Britain was born in 1603, when the union of the crowns united England and Scotland under one monarch. This momentous event ended centuries of savagery and bloodshed, the so-called rough wooing of Scotland by English monarchs. A hundred years later, pressure increased from England for the two countries to be united in full political union, provoking a torrent of protest in Scotland and an outpouring of anti-English feeling. The English, a pack of pork pudding pork eaters, barely god types, a refuse of the whole earth. 
A hodgepodge of bastardly, dastardly scum. I find the most part of folk here a war against it. Insane wee greeting faces. They're flied at the heart. It'll be a black bargain for Scotland.